Welcome to challenge number three of the 10 days of React beginner series. Today, we're going to talk about using React State to update our application. Now, React has a very cool tool called State where we can actually update State and React will go ahead and update the application for us. We don't have to worry about updating any different inputs, any different DOMs. React handles all of that for us. So let's take a look at what the final code sandbox does for us. Here we have two input boxes and these are already provided in the starter code sandbox for you. What we're gonna do is we are going to update an input and automatically React will update our DOM right here where it says display name and we're going to display the age. So if I go update this to Chris, immediately we get an update up here and my age is 30. So that is gonna show directly right there. Now let's look at the starter code sandbox. Here we are using Bulma, which is a CSS framework that I like a lot. We're using Bulma to add some styles already built in for us. And down here, that's what this subtitle class is. This is Bulma, is for, is Bulma sizing. And down here is where the important part is. We're gonna have two parts to this. We're going to display data and we're going to have to collect user input. And all of this is kind of just formatting for the UI. The main thing you should look at is this input right here. So this input right here and this area right here where you display data, those are the two main things you need to be looking at. That will be the starter code sandbox for this challenge. All right, so this is the time where you go ahead and go do the challenge. If you want to pause the video, feel free and go ahead, complete the challenge. When you're ready, come back here, unpause the video, and we'll get straight to the solution. Happy coding. Welcome back. We are going to start working on the solution for this React State challenge number three. Let's get started. All right, so here's our code sandbox starter. Most of our code is going to go here. To get us started, we have to one, listen for an event and two, update our application for state. So we can start with one or the other. I'm going to start with the state part because we need a couple variables for name and for age. So to do this, we would probably think to do something like const name is equal to Chris, right? And then you would say display name here is Chris. Oh, sorry, that should be name. So there we go, we have name there. And now we are able to display Chris. Now the problem with this approach, if you just create a random variable like this, is that if we update this variable, like say somewhere down here, we say, well, we can't update a const, it has to be a let. Therefore, we can say later down here, we go name is equal to blah, right? That would work in this scenario, but if we listened for this input and we waited for the input to get typed into, updating it like this wouldn't really work for us. So we have to use a concept called React State. And in React 16.8, I'm gonna use something new that's called React Hooks. And this is the way that we use state in React. We're going to say, well, let's remove all this right here. We're gonna say const, and we're gonna create an array, name, and set name is equal to use state. And the cool thing about Code Sandbox is that it can auto import for us. So we can click auto import and it'll automatically bring it up here. So this is how you import it in Code Sandbox, in React applications, React use state, which is destructured out of the main React library. And the last thing is we need to give it a default, and I'm gonna say the default is Chris here. Okay, so now we have a variable called name. We have a function called set name that we can use to update the name variable. Now let's talk about this syntax a little bit. Name and set name are two are a variable and a function that come out of this use state function. Now use state takes one parameter. This is going to be our default. So if I said this default would be Nick, that would be what displays on the right. That will be our default name. Now anytime we use set name, this will automatically tell React to say, hey, we are updating the name, so go ahead and update the name, and anytime you want to see the name here in displayed, you're gonna re-render that part, and we should see the update happen in our DOM. Now, if you're not familiar with this syntax, it's called array destructuring. It basically means that use state gives us back an array, and we're gonna take the first part of that as name, and we're gonna take the second part of that as set name. This is just the syntax that React 
hooks has landed on for use state, and that's what we'll use. So definitely check out the React docs if you're not completely sure on use state. Now that we have name, we need to actually update the name based on this input. So this is going to be the second part of our application. We need to make sure that we listen for the input changes here, and then we're going to update state accordingly. Let's go over here. We can say on change because this is how you listen to uh, any events on React in JSX. We're going to say on change. We're going to get the event, and we're going to do an arrow function. We're going to say alert just to make sure that it works. Alert hello. And if I save that, we should get Code Sandbox to reformat that nicely for us. Very good. Now, next, let's go into on change event. So if I type into this, we should get an alert that says hello. There we go. We have our alert called hello. Very nice. OK. Now we need to get the text out of this thing. And the way we get text out of here is we have the event. We're going to say event.target, which is this input because the event is an on change and the target is going to be this input and we're going to get the value out of that. So that value is going to be right uh, in this whatever is typed. Now I press D and the letter D comes up as the alert. Awesome. The next part of this is we need to make sure that the value of this is actually our name. So we are doing values equal to name so that see Nick is showing up in this input. Nick shows up in the display area. Very good. But instead of alerting it, alerting is actually not very helpful to anybody. All we have to do is use this set name method function that we got here. We're going to go down here. Instead of this alert, set name event.target.value. Anytime we're going to update this, Nick 33333, automatically React says, oh, they used set name. And this function updates the actual name variable. Therefore, we need to re render this application so that name is updated. Thank you, React, for being so helpful. Now let's double check to make sure this works. Chris, cool. So main things we had to do for this is one, create a use state and name, set name is what we get. And two, we need to listen for the event on change. And then we can actually call the set name method, sorry, function to actually update our application. If you want to shorten this, you can actually main that E, E. That's a pretty common convention instead of writing the whole word event out. You'll see both in applications. And we have to do the same for age. So we're going to copy this thing down here, age, set age. This is going to be a number. So we're going to start at 30. Now we're passing in a number instead of a string. Use state does just fine with a number, string, Boolean, array, object, whatever we have to do to do the default state. Now we'll use it down here. We are going to display it. So age is here. And we're going to go down here. We're going to do the same exact thing. So let's copy these two, put it on the input right here, save, and code sandbox will format for us. We have age here, and we have set age e.target.value. But there's one thing I want to do. This e.target.value is going to come out as a string. And let me just prove that to you real quick. Console.log. OK. So anytime this changes, we're going to console.log the e.target.value. Let's go to inspect element and console right here. Let's clear this so we can get a nice clean console. And anytime I type in like right here, well, let's check the type of, okay. So that comes out as a string up here earlier. We set, we set age as a number. So we don't really want to set it as a string and down here, our input is actually a number type of input. Therefore, we want to pass it back a number as well. Now, the way we do that is we can say uh, we can use an unary operator, which makes this string convert to a number. So we're just going to do a plus right there. We're going to set this back to set age. All right. So now this is automatically going to convert the string over to a number. We're going to set age as a number because that's what we started as. This input is a type of number, and everything should work just how we expect it to. So let's close this. We're going to update age. We're even going to click this button here, 31, 32, 33. And Chris, cool.
All right, that I believe is going to end this challenge. So notice how we have used use state and we are able to listen for events. Those were the two main things out of this challenge. And then React handled everything else for us. It was able to update all the things and React is very good to us like that. Cool. So that completes challenge number three. I'll see you in the next one.